Today we're gonna do a throwdown between a five to ten dollar multi-tool and a upwards to sixty dollar multi-tool. Both these tools have been used for about four or five years and you can see they're in really good shape. And as a bonus, I'm gonna show you how to make a lanyard for both of these so you never lose them. Interested? Here we go. This one cost me about $5. I got it on a special deal post Black Friday. This one I got for $30 during the same Black Friday deal. This is a Leatherman Wingman and this is the Husky Multi-Tool. I looked both these up online this morning and this one is running for about $59.99 on Amazon and this one is running about $10. Different variation on the outside but pretty much the same tool. Let's weigh the tools. This is the Husky First. It comes in at 192 grams or 6.75 ounces. The Leatherman Wingman comes in at 193 grams, one gram more. A gram is about the weight of a paper clip or 6.85 ounces. As far as length goes, they're about the same. The Husky comes in a little longer, just a shy over 10 centimeters or four inches. The Leatherman Wingman, under four inches and under 10 centimeters. Feel in your hand. This one is a little wider. Okay, the maximum width of the Husky is around two inches or just shy of five centimeters. The Leatherman is an inch and a half and more like 33 millimeters, 3.3 centimeters. General feel in the hand. Okay, this feels good, but it's a little wide. This one feels much better. I can wrap the bottom, my pinky and lower finger behind there. It could fit in a whole bunch of different positions in my hand. Interesting, I never thought about it that way before. Pliers, very functional. First test we're gonna do is a coat hanger cutting test. Take a piece of coat hanger. This is about 16 gauge wire, I'm guessing. Came off pretty easy. There's the little cut, worked out pretty good. Now let's test the Leatherman. About the same, not much different there as far as the number of grips and the cutter goes. The spring is a little clunkier for the lower one. You can actually see the spring exposed. Here you don't see the spring exposed. I don't even know if there's a spring in there. That must. Oh, here it is. It's actually inside and it's a piece of metal on both sides there. That's interesting, I never noticed that either. Here you get just like a standard spring. This has kind of rounded over edges, which is really nice. This one doesn't have rounded edges at all, so it kind of digs into your hand a little bit. As far as a clip, this one has one, and this one does not. Even though it has a clip, I wouldn't rely on that. I really am a big believer in tying it off, and I'll show you how to do that. There's little places here, and it's less obvious here. You can actually tie it here. I'll show you that later. Let's go for the multi-tools. First tool in the Husky is this little groove thing here. You can see I'm really running my thumb over the top of that pretty aggressively. I think that's some sort of cutter. This one, you have it built into the blade. Ooh, that is very sharp. This blade right here, four years old, I've taken and used the heck out of it, and it is razor sharp. I am not gonna run my finger or thumb over as aggressively as, as I am here, here, because I'll just cut it wide open. And it will require a trip to the hospital. Try that out on a piece of wood. Okay, so it's short. You know, can almost go one way with it. It's making progress, but you know, it's not a preference. I, I think that's more for cutting through bone. Let's try that. All right, actually it works a little, but certainly not to the level that this does. Here's the primary blade for both of them. This one, you can see it has a little lock and it's on the outside. You don't have to open up the tool. Clicks in place really nice and the blade is facing outwards. So you hold it like this. Here, you actually have to open the tool up. It doesn't lock in place. Here, it's locked in place. You have to really disengage the lock and you can hear it click in place. Unlike this one where the blade is facing out of the tool, this one's facing into the tool. So I guess that protects your hand a little bit. It's sharp, but nowhere near. This is like surgical steel sharp, weapon grade sharp. And I've never sharpened this either. And it's got a chrome finish on it. I can lightly run my fingers over it and I don't have to worry about this. Like with that blade, <laughs> I get really nervous in running my finger across. I can feel the sharpness on that. Okay, so that's what the inside of it looks like. Here's what the inside of one looks like. 
like. This one doesn't have a scissors, this does. And again, the scissors is on the outside. People complain about the scissors, because here is the actual spring. Click it in place. Unlike the blade of the knife, you can see the lock right there. It took me a while to figure this out, and then you're trying to open the scissors, and then you're playing with it like this with your fingers. And you say, come on, Leatherman, you could do better than that. And then one day, you click it in place, it got there, it locked in place, see? There it's locked. I'm pushing really aggressively against that, and now it's in place. Then that springs open, and the scissors work great. Scissors are reasonably sharp. They're not as sharp as these. Just like a typical kid's scissors. Probably the dullest thing on this Leatherman Wingman. Disengage the scissors. You just push down on that again, put it back in. Other tools. This one has a file. So on this one, you actually push from the back and then eventually you can get this. This one's much shorter. This one has a little groove to pull it from. And this one you have to push from the back. Again, that, that seems to be locked in place. Not bad. Well, it's got a little bit of a click to it. You really gotta kinda commit to get it off. Okay, this one, less of a click. This one, it has an inches and centimeters. You sit there and you go, okay, how many times are you going to measure something that small? Maybe a bolt or a nut? Can't open, oh, here we go. Okay, so you gotta kinda pull it all open and then all three tools come out. So this has a nice little sharp a box opener maybe or for cutting line. Here's the file you saw before and there's the can opener. Nice little sharp edge. Have I ever used this on a can? No. Does it work? I think I'm gonna have to try it out. Here you got the can opener. It's chromed over, which I guess keeps it from rusting. Well, that's got a nice little finish on it too. They're about the same sharpness, actually. Profile is about the same. This one happens to be a little thinner. And then this has, has a bottle opener incorporated into it. I think you're supposed to use that also as a bottle opener. Can opener test. This is just a old coffee can that I had on my workbench. Leatherman, oh yeah. It laughs at this can. Let's try the Husky. All right. A little bit of a grip problem, but once you get used to it, it works just as well. I feel like I could open a can with either one of these. I give the edge to the Leatherman Wingman. One of the nice features I like about this is that you push the blades out from the back. Here's the screwdrivers. This actually has a little logo here in case you can't figure out that that's the Phillips head. And that's the flat head. Okay, so it's thicker. Click in place. Phillips head to Phillips head. This one's a little more rounder and has a more typical profile for a Phillips head. This is flatter. I think they both work well. Used them all the time. Here you have a choice of two screwdrivers. So you can close them up, and here you have a more narrower, slightly flatter blade on the top, and wider. Here you only have one. It's just a standard flat head. Actually, if you look at it, it's almost the size of those two put together. And the chrome is on there. This is a dollar finish. I don't think that the quality is any less. I don't want to say over-chromed, but very chromed. How's that? Now we're going to open up the multi-tools and show them in all their glory. This one's gonna be interesting. I gotta be careful, I'm gonna cut myself. So the wingman plays out something like this. There you go. And then the husky has what I will call a more traditional pattern. So the wingman, how many tools? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I'm missing anybody. Eight tools on the wingman, on the husky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Of what you have, this kind of reamer tool that I'm not so sure I've ever used. Now we'll make the lanyards for both of these. Okay, we're back to the basic level. I just, that's another thing I never noticed before. The spring actually is wider, so that makes the grip here a little bit wider also. So a lanyard, this is made out of a boot lace, just a loop here, and then I'm going to run it through one of these grooves so it doesn't interfere with the blade. This one doesn't have anything quite like that, but it does have this circle here and a gap here that I'm gonna use, put a lanyard on. Never had a lanyard on this one because it's more kind of sits in my car slash desk slash workshop. Occasionally goes outside. This one goes outside on pretty much every journey I take into the wild. I definitely have a lanyard on this one. I'm just gonna upgrade a little bit with a paracord. There's a whole bunch of different options. You got one here, one here. This is a little more narrower. You've got one here and one here. This one has better triangle in it, so that's where I'm gonna put the paracord through. You might have to trim that down a little bit to make the hole. Of course, it's gonna go in great this way. Yeah, see. Originally, I used to have the knot in here and then it would be hard to get these tools out and then it would bind up and there's always a chance that you're gonna cut the cord. So this time, I'm gonna run it through this way. There we go. Then I'm gonna put a stop or not in that. Stopper knots are an interesting thing. I use them in climbing, but I actually learned them when I was on a 
sailboat racing team. See, that's a nice big knot. It's in place. And then you can see this will not bind. If you had the knot on the other side here, see, that would be a big problem. You'd be constantly hitting that knot. But the fact that you have this 100 pound paracord on that side, that's not going to give way. Now, length, all up to you. I like it to be a little longer so that I can loop this around, run it through a pant loop or whatever. So that's on your belt like this. Pull the tool out of your pocket and it's still connected to your pants. So even if you drop it to your side, it falls out of your hand, you're hanging on desperately to a ledge. For some reason, you need to take your multi-tool out. You're not gonna drop it on anybody and you're not gonna lose it. That's the great thing about these lanyards. The cord for the Leatherman Wingman, I've decided to use 35 inches, depending on your height, your length, and just personal preference, you may not want to do that. You may want it shorter, but you don't want to make it so that it's so short, you can't use the tool without taking the lanyard off. Just make a loop and an overhead knot. Now, you can make this long enough so it just slides over your belt, but I want it just big enough so that I can pass the tool through it. That's my personal preference. When it's this long, if your kid or somebody else that you're working with needs it, you could almost hand it to them. They could actually use the tool and then hand it back to you. For the Husky, since I don't have an arrangement like this where I can use a stopper knot, I'm actually gonna have to tie it through here. Ran it through the side there. I guess I can do a bowline on this one. Grab it goes out of the hole, goes around the tree, goes back in the hole. Bingo. And that knot is really solid. And then just finish it off on the other side, same way. I'll tell you, but this one you can just put around the belt like that. The verdict. Is this one worth anywhere from six to 12 times as much as this one? A little bit of a status on the wingman. I don't really care about status. It's a tool. I'm going to use it. To tell you the truth, I've had this for four years, and I think one, maybe two people have commented the fact that it's a wingman. No one has ever commented, oh, this is a husky. But it's a functional tool. This one feels better in the hand as far as construction. They use very comparable, just a slightly upgraded hex bolt. Would I pay $60 for this? Probably not. Functionally, they both do about the same thing. The scissors is a definite plus on this one. Would I pay $30 for this again? Yes. Would I buy this tool again? I bought it about five times. I gave it away to family members. I have a couple in the car because if I lose a $5 tool, it's a disappointment. If you lose a $60 tool, I'm going to shed a tear about that. I've got to find this tool. It's a $60 tool. Loss factor. This one, much lower loss factor than this one. Both of these will probably outlast me, as long as I don't lose them. Thumbs up and comments, always appreciated. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe below so that you can get notifications of when I publish videos. I do tools, I make things, I break things, I do a little bit of everything. All coming soon.